Welcome back to another installment of Do These Albums Have Any Skips? Lou and I today are going to be going through 15 different track lists and answering the question for each album, does this album have a skip or not? And guys, let me know in the comment sections where Lou and I get it right, where we get it wrong. And if you guys want to see more content just like this, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications because we are doing videos like this on a weekly basis. But Lou, welcome back, man. Iconic series at NFR. It's one of my favorites. Time. It's one of my favorites to do. And we've had a lot of hot takes in the past about this. We've gotten a lot of people upset with this series, especially with songs that we don't necessarily enjoy. So going back into these track lists, what was your process? My process was just seeing, you know, what do I play? What don't I play? Are these songs poor? Is it more of a personal thing where I don't gravitate? Mm -hmm. But let's jump right into this, guys. The first track list that we have is Utopia by Travis Scott. And obviously things have changed since we heard it in August. Something like Del Resto, which I didn't connect with off the bat, I really enjoy now. I want to ask you, is that a skip for you? Because I feel it like it, it adds to the eeriness of the track list. I it just never, in. It, regardless, though, when I'm going back to Utopia, I'm not looking for tracks like Del Resto. If That's I'm an L. Completely, uh, completely honest with you. Listen, if you enjoy it, you enjoy really it. Really nice chorus um, from Beyonce. Sure, I guess. Uh, Topia Twins, that's another skip for me. Uh, I'm not going towards there anymore. Uh, Circus Maximus, another one where I'm just kind of, where I'm just kind of like, nah, not for me. I, I'm, I'm being honest. This is what yeah. I'm. I'm just. This is I'm a, a personal rotation. This is my personal rotation. What am I skipping? I'm not like I, I'm not totally engaged with these tracks. I don't find them bad tracks whatsoever. But like, if I want to go back to something like Del Resto, I have a whole fucking Beyonce album. Full Can you of it. at least give the weekend some praise for Circus Max? So, of course, he has a fantastic okay. performance. But I mean, like, even at that, it's not the craziest weekend performance I've ever heard. It's good standard quality for the weekend. And another one I have is K-pop. Those are my four skips. Yeah, K-pop is so strange to me that that was like the lead single and that it was hyped up because it's it's an obvious Travis sell. You know what I mean? And having Bad Bunny dominate it. I'm, I'm tired of my favorite rappers featuring Bad Bunny. Like, I'm okay with hearing him on the radio and at clubs, but when it comes to hip-hop albums, I just don't feel like he adds much, especially to Utopia. This That song feels like a total outlier. Definitely a skip. A apart from that, God's Country was borderline for me just no, because no it way. comes in a run of tracks where you get Hyena, Thank God, Modern Jam, My Eyes, then you get then you get God's Country, and the whole la, la, la. You're questioning, that always me, for Del me. You're questioning listen, me for Del Resto. Said, you want to skip God's Country? I'm saying it's not a skip, but it was borderline for me. Um, so yeah, my skips would be Topia Twins and K-pop, but let's move on to the next album that we have, and this is going to be Her Loss by Drake and 21 Savage. Lots of replay value here. A lot of replay value, not too many tracks to abandon when it comes to this album. Hours in Silence has grown on me. I get it's a six-minute ballad. Yes, 21 Savage's auto-tune isn't the greatest, but the whole refrain of like, turn my bitch up, that really got catchy for me. Um... It's a tolerable song, so that's not a skip. Um, same for Jumbotron, Ship Poppin'. That was one song that I feel like kind of like aged in a great way for me, to be honest with you. I feel like it's a banger. I was able to see it live as well, the Drake show in Vancouver. Um, I really enjoyed it off of that. I have three skips on this album. Wow, I only have two. Okay, Let so me my guess, three... Circle Loco is one of them. Absolutely, there is no way. <laughs> I'm never it's playing It's not bad. That. It's a skip. You're you're playing Circle Loco in the car. If it comes on, I'll, I'll never play it at a will, but if it's there... No, nah, no way. You know what it is? I just, I love One More Time so much that, like, it gives me the nostalgia. I'm okay yeah, with that's it. Why, that's why I skipped the song is because I love One More Time so much. <laughs> then after that, I have 3M on Glenwood. Bro, no one's playing that. There's no way Bro, I'm getting that in my rotation. Yeah. Uh, th that's a skip for you as well, 3M right? on Glenwood's a skip, too. It's not a bad song, but the production's laid back, and it's uneventful, bro. And, like... Why would you only rap for two minutes on a timestamp song? It's a timestamp. I know. I feel you like gotta be I ready to bar up. And again, it's it's personal, it's introspective, but it's boring at the end of the day. Another skip for me is gonna be treacherous twins. I have the same one. Super cringe lines like you say you a dog, then roof, I'm a dog. Or when I need a friend, you my only friend. It just it comes off as a bit childish to me. Um my treacherous little twins. And, and 21 Savage comes in and out on the song. You barely remember that he was even on it to begin with, so my skips would be Treacherous Twins and 3 a.m. Ants would be Treacherous 3 a.m. And you said Circle. That is correct. All right. Next, Next one, Blonde by Frank Ocean. No skips. <laughs> Get this out of I'll me. be honest. I don't listen to Blonde by Frank Ocean all that often because I don't feel like crying every single day, to be honest with you. It really puts me in an emotional bag. you don't bag. have to. Like, you could listen to like White Ferrari or even something like Nike's just as like a nice casual play while you're taking Absolutely. a walk. Um, and honestly speaking, there's not too many weak moments, if any, on this. Um, I love Solo Reprise, which a lot of people feel like is a skip just because no, no way. it's out of context. Andre 3K is alone on it, but he's still 
rapping about like loneliness and how like he's an outcast in comparison to his peers. Do you feel peers. like Futura's maybe a skip for some people? I feel like it is just because it's super long and you have um, a vocal passage. And honestly speaking, I don't always listen to the skits, but I'm not going to count that as a skip. Because also listen to they, it add, the they, add, they add context to yeah, the project. Yeah, but I feel like you know? for Blonde, if you're going into the album experience and you really have to like say, well, is this a skip or not? No, obviously not. Like I don't think it brings down the quality of the album by whatsoever. It actually is. It's a pretty integral piece of the track list. It is. And Pretty Sweet, that song used to be a skip for me just because the instrumental is super chaotic. You have like this burst of synths. Mm -hmm. It's a bit messy, but it ends up finding its groove later on. And I still enjoy that track. So... Um, ultimately, no skips, I think, for any of us, right? No skips. So first absolutely. skipless album of the episode. Next up, we have 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. Um, super enjoyable album. I love listening to this during, like, a cold winter drive. It just it keeps you alert. It keeps you active. I haven't done this re-listen in a long time, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised by Kanye singing on this album and the way that he's able to harmonize. And it's so interesting, right, because we're in 2023 and we're able to see the full extent of the impact of this album and just how many people have bit the style of this album to kind of use it as the blueprint for theirs um but when it comes to this album i'm sorry i have two of them i got two skips on this album it's not that much either way um i have paranoid with mr hudson i just i find it a bit plastic of a song if i'm being completely yeah. honest with you okay. i'm not a big fan of the instrumental um i'm not saying mr hudson had a bad performance on the track itself but it just it really doesn't add anything to me and when i'm on this album i'm going back to the amazings i'm going back to the heartless i love lockdown Say you will, like like I'm on those tracks. The first half of the track list is definitely stronger. And Robocop uh, is a skip as well. Robocop is a skip. I feel like it sounds like this upbeat Disney song, and the writing subpar. Kanye's hook is a bit weak, so that's a skip. The other one that I was considering, just because I don't like to play it that often, is um, Pinocchio Story. But in terms of the writing and the message about yes, Kanye wanting to be incredible. a real boy and to be looked at as a nor normal, ordinary human being, and the juxtaposition of the crowd just ignoring what he's saying and cheering over him mm -hmm. i thought that was genius but it's very raw and the mixing isn't the best because he wanted to give you that live feel but i, feel I like but i like the live version of it as well because I do. like I, I feel like it's so intentional for the album and that was another one that i was saying was well i don't go back to it all that often but realistically it, it's still a great inclusion on the album i'm just saying if that was recorded like as a real studio recording it could have been one of his best songs Th that's all i'm gonna say all right, let's but keep going not on. Not a with skip. This. My only skip is Robocop. Next up, we have A Great Chaos by Ken Carson, an album that we didn't get the chance to review, but the community's been going crazy over this. Um, a lot of people are calling it the best album in opium history, aside from any Cardi music. And this was a pleasant surprise for it me. It was man. a pleasant surprise. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I really enjoyed this listen. And I'm not like saying it's the best album of the year. No. I don't want to say that it's got by skips. any means. But it has it has skips. But also, I want to say this. I love that there's an intention behind this album. And yes, Ken Carson's lyrics are not going to be the most well-developed. You're not going to find Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst on this track list. That's not what you're going <laughs> well, to this for. Not. Obviously not. Yeah. But I like the sequencing of this album because the way that the production really rings off for me, and I was mentioning this in a live stream before, you see that like it's more of a darker tone throughout the start of the project. And then as... like. The, the production sort of progresses and the sequencing progresses of the track list, you get a lot more lively production. You get a lot more of like those chiptune synths and almost like a glitch hop sort of production that you might find on like a JPEG Mafia album to a certain extent. I feel like where the weakness of this album really plays to his detriment in certain points is there's sometimes too much going on and like the vocal mixing is almost unbearable. There's also some sections. weak production. Like my first skip is going to be Lose, a song that'll literally blow out your speakers for how much distortion there is. Like it's too it much. It sounds like radio static. Yeah, it's too much. It's um, way too another much. skip looking at this track list would be hardcore for me. Okay, I have a side note on this, okay? I said, I, this was exactly what I noted down when I was doing this. I was on the verge of skipping hardcore, but the second verse is hard as fuck, and I like the second portion of the production. But he's rapping off beat on both verses. That's why no, I don't oh, appreciate it. Oh, the second verse is it. cool, though. The and second also, verse is nice. The hook is so annoying and repetitive. I just That was a complete non-starter for me. Um, um, it's Over is another uh, skip for me. That was a track that I wasn't too fond of. Um, I'm just not a, fi a fan of like Ken's offbeat flow on this one, and it's just not something I really gravitate towards all that much. Um, the song Pots, the beat is absolute garbage, but it sounded like all the stems in FL Studio were like glitching totally unlistenable for me i feel like it's a bit of a useless track to the album if i'm being completely honest with you it's like it, it that that was one of those filler moments where it should have been left off the album and then um what about nightcore I, I was on the verge 
I was for, gonna for say Nightcore. I was on the verge. Yeah, I, I I didn't like that song at all. Um, again, rapping ahead of the beat, the flow just didn't I preferred seem part two though. Part yeah, two was better. Part two is much better. Part Absolutely. two is much better. Absolutely. Yeah, so four skips for me. A lot of average and passable tracks within it, but uh, definitely an upgrade for Ken Carson finding his own style and his so own. So it's unique over. Voice. You end up keeping it's over. I, I keep it's over. Yeah. Four okay. skips for me. What about I, you? I have four skips as well. All right. That's a sick ratio, though. That's kid. pretty good ratio for like a sixteen-song album. I think he did a good job on there. I'm he not did. gonna lie. To you. Shout out to Ken Carson. But the next album that we have is Savage Mode Two by Twenty One Savage and Metro Boomin. Um, R.I.P. Love is a song that grew on me. I used to have it as a skip but um i found the writing i found the flow and the fluidity of the track pretty good i only have one skip what do you have how many i have two i have rp love i do wow feel, okay it's a bit uh it's a bit swiss cheese but you know what he's not really like he's more melodic rapping i i, I like it because he's not really overextending his vocals or abusing autotune like he does in a Regar- lot of the love tracks yeah, but regardless though i'm just when i'm coming to this I, i'm here for like the many men and the snitches, snitches and rats, rats yeah. I, i'm not here for fucking rest in peace love we're and, here for morgan <laughs> absolutely I, give me give me morgan but regardless though yeah mr right now i've never been a fan of that collaboration if you guys are a fan of the podcast lou and i have spoken down on this track on several different occasions i just i don't feel like either of them fit on that track they both feel extremely awkward um i do feel like it's a weaker production from tw- from metro Boomin as far as the album goes itself still a good beat though but regardless not for me it's actually a good beat but a lot of people have said that they would rather hear this on clb i wish i never heard it at all i wish it never existed to be honest with you and it's interesting because auto tune is supposed to is supposed to do like pitch correction but it felt like 21's um auto-tune singing was just off key um drake came in with some of the corniest lyrics about like being the slow pump king i I don't know i'm not a fan (laughs) of it um yeah not a fan of that one but yeah only one skip for me on savage mode 2 next up we have playboy cardi by playboy cardi um no skips for me on this If cardi would return to this era i would lose my shit i have so much fun going back to this track list um the mixes are so clean cardi does not phone in a single performance even the low-key songs like Had To um, with the Mexico Joe production, Immaculate Vibes, no skips, bro. No, so even it might be a like, hot take. Even th- There's no skips. Even something like Kelly K, for yeah. example, that's a fucking banger. Um, number nine, people maybe have a complaint with that song. I Do don't they? see why. I, I've seen some people complain that it's legitimately inaudible. Wow. Like there's, there's nothing going on besides Cardi ad libs, but it's so fucking fire. It's one of the best productions on the entire album. So yeah, no skips on self-titled. Please excuse me for being antisocial. Let me pull this track list up, man, because... In my notes, I don't necessarily have too much that I don't enjoy with this album. I got but, two skips on But this. I have two. I, I'm on the verge of three, but so what do you have? definitely Moonwalking with Lil Durk. That's one of them. Um, fucking Roddy just takes his high pitch to a level it should never be taken to where he sings, I got tennis like Serene, and it's just, it's screechy. Then Dirk's rapping about seeing Coochie through Pantios. W. He doesn't say panties. <laughs> he says Pantios. There we go. Um, um, uh, honestly, I've never been a fan of Boom, uh, Boom, Boom, Boom. Yes, that's another. That's my other skip. Boom, Boom, Room. You know, Roddy rapping about taking girls to his Boom, Boom, Room. Boom, Boom, Room. You know? Not um, for myself. Not for and, me. Um, Atrocious hook. I don't know. I, I Don't would... say tiptoe. No, of course okay. not. I, I well, what's you... wrong with I you? I feel like I've heard you talk down on that song what's before. What's wrong with you? Um, I was kind of maybe looking at... I don't want to say high fashion, but I, I, I'm okay with the song itself. It's a bit of a weaker track on the album. I like high fashion. I, li- I like backseat. Um, I'm cool with it, though. But yeah, two skips. Two skips. On Please Excuse Me for Being Anti-Social. The next track list that we have is going to be Question Mark by XXX Tentacion. How was the re-listen on this, by the way? Oh, I love this. I think this really might be my favorite XXX Tentacion project, even over 17. Um, super versatile, super diverse in terms of the sounds mm-hmm. you're getting from getting... Um, metal to getting acoustic singer-songwriter tracks to getting some more lyrical tracks know, like Infinity. Yeah, you know what was interesting too about this album? I, I'm looking at this uh, the timing of the album. It was 18 songs, 38 minutes and I feel like X was maybe one of the first people to really popularize, like let's say those really short cuts but giving such good bursts of energy and substance within them. Do you have any skips? I do have skips. What do you so got? one of them is going to be Smash with PNB Rock. I just found I have the it same one. generic and it sounds... More and more steel the more I hear it. Another skip for me would have to be going down where 
I mean, yes, X is getting you know creative vocally, but I, there's I'm just cool there's though. certain voices that I just can't vibe with. You got yeah. you, got, you got a bit eccentric with that, and I just I wasn't able to follow along for the ride. So those are my two skips. I only have one. Um, like you said, Smash with PNB Rock. Um, I was just never a big fan of the track, even when the song was released. So um, doesn't really gravitate towards me. Doesn't make my rotation. Solid album though. Uh, but super solid album, and that's it. I only have one skip off. All this right. Album. Next up, we have Let's Start Here by Lil Yachty and. This is a pretty tight and, con and concise experience from beginning to end. It feels like you're it in the is. passenger seat as Lil Yachty drives through uh, this acid trip. And it was a big surprise for me. It's definitely my favorite Yachty project, despite the heavy influences, let's say, of Tame Impala or Pink Floyd. Um, I really just feel like the only song that maybe sucks me out of the universe would be The Alchemist. Um, maybe because it's the more rap-leaning track and... The only memorable aspect of it is Fouché stunning vocals. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the skips for me just because, as you said, it kind of is a, like it's an outlier for the yeah. album experience. And as much as I really think that this is a good album, I just, I don't know, man. Like, it really doesn't add too much to the album experience. You have more me. skips. I feel like you have more that you, you uh, might be. I, I'm not a big fan of Say Something. That's what, okay. that's one of those songs that I'm not a big fan of. I'm just not a fan of, like, like uh, sorry, Yachty's vocals on the track mm. itself. Um kind of feel a bit too brash and like they kind of like off put me like when I'm listening to the song so so two skips that's a, or that's, that's it that's for me and then honestly if I had to be unbiased yeah I'd say probably two skips not bad yeah I mean it's, listen, not, a, it's uh, not a bad ratio yeah I, I think I will agree that his vocals were maybe the weakest aspect of the track list but Yachty did his thing his best album in our opinion but the next track list that we have is going to be Barter 6 by Young Thug a lot of people view this as peak Young Thug 13 songs, all killer, no filler. Anything. And yeah, bro, I mean, listen, how can you hate on this tape when, when Thug is dissing people for not knowing how to milk cows, bro? Like that that's that, that's the type you of wackiness skips, that you're getting. You have any on skips here. on here? Um honestly, I used to have a hard time getting into the song Just My Be, which is the outro, just because he comes in with this very speedy flow. But that's just sort of the nature of young Thug, where he'll be so experimental sometimes that it takes time. To get I really behind enjoy the track, it. but I love it now. Yeah, it's a perfect way to close off the mixtape. I feel like maybe if you're new into Young Thug, you might look at that as a skip, but for the most part, I do feel like this is 13 for 13. Barter 6 is easily one of the best trap projects to come out in the 2010s decade. You think it's Thug's best, or you um, have Jeffrey above it? No, I, I, they're both hand in hand, but I all, all, honestly, I think that this might be second to Jeffrey. Okay, okay, that's second fair. Second to Jeffrey, in my opinion. All right. But let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Finally Rich by Chief Keef. This was such a pleasant surprise going back, bro. Such a pleasant fucking surprise. The production on this album is insane, bro. It is so triumphant. And it's hard because, like, I, I know people consider this a drill album. You do as well. But I feel like it's so much more than just your regular average drill album. So let me know. What don't you like about it? Listen, it's definitely a classic album. I think the highs are, like, fucking sky high. But it does have its lowlights. I'm not going to lie to you about that. So looking at the track list, I would say laughing to the bank. No way. Are you serious? Bro, I know it's ha, iconic, ha, ha. but the whole ha ha ha, it's a troll, bro. Ha, ha. Don't tell me you're and not in your zone. And he says like, my girl is bye bye bye. Like, it's, just, it's horrendous, <laughs> it's bro. It's crazy. No. I'm, I'm not 12 no years way. old anymore, no bro. No way. No way. It's no horrendous. Way. It's um, super trollish. Um, another skip that I have is going to be Ballin'. Just the synths are so obnoxious. The way they ring off with too much reverb. You don't like Ballin um, either? What's wrong? You like this like fucking Ballin. album? <laughs> bro, What's surprisingly, French Montana on Diamond. Yeah, bro. that's a I crazy have to song. give that man credit where it's due because we don't often do it. <laughs> that's a crazy song. But bro, you know, he was able to hang with Soso over this explosive beat. Five. But even the low-key songs on here, like an Hallelujah or even like a yeah. Kobe, for example, some of the best tracks. Kobe's on the deluxe, though, I believe, right? Um, I, I, I feel I, like it is. I, I I don't know how it was split up on Apple yeah. Music. I'm kind of looking at it. This is the deluxe version, so maybe. Uh, how do you feel about Psycho? Yeah, it's fucking, it's fire, It's a bro. banger. I have no skips on Finally Rich. No skips? Not even laughing to the bang. No, bro, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Like, like, okay, so... Let's say you're getting ready for... Like, I used to bump this album, like, let's say, before rugby games and shit like that. That I'm, gets you hyped? Bro, it's crazy. Like, just, just, just play Love Sosa, bro. Don't complicate your life, bro. Come on now. It's not play my Kobe. It's not my fault you don't understand the complexity of laughing to the bank. Take your L. But okay, let's All keep right. going on with this. Let's go on to where we have Wadzir by Earl Sweatshirt. We're now have Wadzir. Super grateful to have this project now on streaming platforms. And it was long overdue after getting amazing songs like E. coli from Uncle Al and Earl Sweatshirt. And listen, I do agree with the, with the complaint that some people have about this album that 
Earl Sweatshirt didn't really get out of his comfort zone too much vocally or stylistically. But, but he never does, though. He doesn't often do it. And it's well written. It's well produced. Great songs all across. Love the features from Mike and Vince Staples, who has two of them on here. No skips, bro. Like no it, skips. it really brought me to a place. Eleven of- songs, twenty-seven minutes, really concise. And I, I, I mean, like, if there would be a skip on here, I feel like it would be criminal, just because you don't necessarily have too much runtime on the album, and it's only eleven songs. So to be that short and concise, I think they did a fantastic job at curating this album. And like you said, the mic feature was great. Vince Staples having two placements on the track list um, with the songs. The what's it called? How do you pronounce it? Caliphate. Caliphate? Yeah. And then Mankala. Those, if I pronounce those correctly. Guys, let me know in Great the comment section if I fuck those up. Is but it yeah. an album of the year contender? Well, not contender, but top 10 list contender. It's going to be my consideration for yeah, top 10. Absolutely. For sure. But okay, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Because the Internet by Childish Gambino, an album that actually keeps on getting better with every single time that I revisit it. And um, I, I think it's easily like his best album, in my opinion, next to Awaken My Love. Just because I do feel like it is a mixture of Awaken My Love and maybe Camp to a certain extent. Absolutely. I think that it's also great in terms of its replay value and its non-skippability, if that makes sense. Just because when you go through the track list, you're following the story of the boy. You have a narrative that's really consistent throughout. So it makes you want to follow along for the story within every single track that's dedicated to that theme. And honestly, like... I wish the song The Party was a bit longer because he catches a fire pocket Incredible. throughout that last yeah, verse. Super I wish there was more to that, but that's just a little fucking nitpick on my end. To be honest with you. I, I love I love the way that this kind of like follows a Star Wars team to like a certain extent as well. I love the influence of that. Like the George Lucas influence, even in the titling of the album. I found that really cool. Yeah. Um, but even looking at let's say some features like Chance the Rapper and Janine Aiko, I do feel like <laughs> Pink Toes? Absolutely. Oof. They they add like sort of like, well, I want to get to the next track just to be able to hear those features over again so because the internet no skips no skips man okay, and I, I, I thought i was gonna have skips on this but going back no no no, no. What um, was the, so you did before this listen before listen, this i hadn't heard it in maybe a year i did it uh i did it a couple of months ago for the summer okay cool it was a really enjoyable uh, listen but okay let's end off this episode what, which what I think is going to be ending, it's going to end up making my top three albums At of the year. At one point, I think you said this might be your album of the year for rap. For rap music, it's definitely up there. And this is going to be The Patience by Mick Jenkins. I am just, I, I'm sad that we didn't end up getting to review this. You mm. know, I wish they could, but this is kind of maybe like my make it up moment for you guys. Um, 11 songs, 28 minutes. There's no, there's no skips here, bro. Yeah. There's really no skips. Some soulful, here. chill, jazz rap, some stoner rap, the un- the entendres, the perspectives that Mick is getting is giving you on so many different topics. Um, he's re- he's he's too talented to be able to miss on only eleven songs. But there's also like this jazzy undertone that rings yeah. off throughout the entire album, which you would come to expect with any Mick Jenkins album. But there's sort of like this darker sentiment to the album that I really do enjoy. So, example, going on to something like Sitting Ducks with Benny the Butcher. Um, for example, or even something like, let's say, um, Roy Jabiv. It has such an incredible, um, let's say, content matter to it, to where like he's describing all of the colors of the rainbow um, through his lyrics and lyricism, and I find that to be extremely even interesting. Even a song like 007, oh, just my the goodness. atmosphere that just hooks Smoke you in right Break away. Smoke Dance might be one of the better songs of the year. One of the best collaborations I've heard all year. Um, Freddie Gibbs on Show & Tell. Um, Vic Mensa on Farm to Table. That is an incredible verse from Vic Mensa. I'm telling you, there's no skips on this album. There is. I don't think there's any skips on this one. But guys, let us know in the comments, do these albums have any skips? And which albums should we bring into the next version of this series? I just realized this, okay? Since Let's Start Here, I didn't have a single skip in like the past five albums. Barter 6 for me, no skips. Finally Rich, no skips. Vaudziv, no skips. Because the Internet, no skips. The Patience, no skips. Well, Finally Rich, I had skips. But yeah, for the last the last three, I didn't have any skips. I so, didn't have much. A good balance with this one. But I, like we were saying, guys, let us know which albums we bring in next. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the subscribe button if you're new to NFR's content. And there's definitely more content on the way, guys. Much love. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you soon. Peace.